If you enjoyed our last video on the pencil crayon peacock, we're going to do a variation on it today. I'm going to show you how you can color in this peacock using watercolor paints. Now some people find watercolors really intimidating. This is a nice, easy picture to get you started. All you're going to need is a piece of cardboard, your pencil and a watercolor set. Let's get started. You can click on the link in the description below to download a step-by-step -step guide to help you through this video. But to start our picture, we're going to start with the peacock's tail. Now this is going to be a large oval, starting about halfway up your page, um, and going down to about an inch or two and a half centimeters from the bottom of your page. Try and space it out so that there's an equal amount of space on both sides of your oval. Now from the top of our oval, we're going to draw another oval. This oval is going to be for the peacock's body. It's going to be much smaller and at an angle lying down. Now to join the tail and the body together, we're going to start at the point where they meet and draw an S shape going down to where they meet again. So we're just curving it. Use that as your first marker and then try and smooth it off. Now where they overlap here, you might want to erase this line. I found it's easier if you're working, once you're done with the line, to erase it. Otherwise it can get quite confusing at the end when you've got lots of lines all over the place. So we don't need these overlapping lines anymore. It also helps you to see if you're on the right track with your drawing. Right, we're going to draw the peacock's neck and um, head now. Again, it's an S shape. Start from the top of the head. Now, the peacock's going to have a crest on the top of his head, so you don't want to start too close to the top of the page and you don't have space for his crest. So come down a little bit and again use that S shape and join it to the edge of your oval. And then you just round off that S. As you get to the bottom of the neck, bring the two lines closer together. So it should taper off. Okay, again, erase any lines that you don't need. And then you're just going to add his beak. It's a hooked beak, almost like an L shape that's joined together. So two L shapes. Add his eye in, just drawing a simple black dot in his eye. And then you're going to do his crest. Draw four curved lines coming out from the top of his head. And then the crest is kind of like a rectangular shape, but it's a bit scrunchy and wonky. Now that we've drawn the outline of our peacock, we're just going to add a little bit of shading on his body here. So the pattern of his feathers on his body, it's kind of like a fish scale. So start with the fish scale, just a simple fish scale. So I've done one scale there. The second one, I'm going to do three. So we're going to get our shape first, and then we can shade it in. I'm just doing hatching, which is lots of short little lines. And I'm making the lines shorter at the top and then thicker at the bottom. And as they get to the top of a curve, shorter. As they get to the bottom, thicker and shorter and thicker. But right, you're just going to go along, shading in each of these fish scales. But now we're ready to paint. So before you start painting with watercolors, you need to create your wash or your paint. And you need to do that by starting with water. So the whole point of watercolors is that it's a concentrated paint that you have got to add water to and dilute to be able to use. Most paints, watercolor paints, their lid has got little grooves in it that can be used to mix your paint in. So we're going to start by taking some water, loading our brush up with the water, and just dropping it into our little punnets. Now, the trick with watercolors is mixing enough color 
to paint your picture. So the peacock's tail is quite big, especially if you're using an A4 sheet of paper. Um, so I'm going to dip it in my water about five or six times to make sure that I get enough paint. We are going to be using two washes or two colors in our picture. So this nice dark, uh, almost peacock blue, like a navy blue. And then we're going to make a greeny blue that's going to be mixed into the tail. So I'm adding a bit more water to my second hollow. To make the, the greeny blue for the background of the tail, I'm going to use a little bit of blue and a little bit of green. Now when you're doing watercolors, you should always have a little tester sheet of paper so that you can test your color or your wash and make sure that you're happy with it. Right, so I've got two greens. I'm going to try a little bit of both greens. I'm rolling my brush around on the paint and then mixing it into the water. With watercolors, you should always start with your lightest colors first and then you paint lastly with your darker colors. So that means the first wash or layer of paint that you use needs to be a lot lighter. And then as you add a second layer, you add a little bit more paint into it. So I've taken two um, paintbrushes full of green and I'm taking one paintbrush full of blue and mixing it in. This is looking quite dark. You can never really tell with watercolors until you've tried it on a piece of paper. So I'm just gonna spread it on the paper. Do you see how much lighter it looks on the paper than in your palette? So you really do need to be making sure that you are testing your colors. I'm going to add just a little bit more of the green to my color. When you use your paintbrush with watercolors, you don't go straight down like that. You need to have your hand at an angle and use the side of the paintbrush. Right, I'm happy with this color. I'm going to go ahead and start painting. Now with watercolors, once you start painting, you are committed and you need to carry on until you finish that little section. You can't stop and go and do something else um, because the colors are not gonna blend together well. So make sure you have your paint ready, your paintbrush, and some water on hand so that you can fix any mistakes really quickly. So I'm loading my brush up, rolling it around in the paint to get as much paint as possible on there. And what we're going to do is just paint in this whole tail area. So I'm going around the edges first. Now I want it to be a little bit blurry around the edges. So what I'm going to do is just dip my brush in water and go over these edges, kind of blends out the color for you a little bit. So if you want to get a lighter shade of a watercolor, just dip your brush in water and go over it. It also helps you to blend the colors together. So if they've started drying, you add a bit of water to it and it helps um, make it spreadable again. Okay, so we're just going to go over this whole tail area the larger your brush, then the quicker and easier this will be. So if you've got a small brush, you should perhaps draw a smaller picture. It will be easier to paint and get a nice smooth finish. Right, so I'm just gonna dip my brush in the water again to help me spread this paint out. Now I've just said you can use a piece of cardboard for this picture because we're only going to do two or three layers of coloring. But if you were doing a proper watercolor picture, you need to, to use thicker paper. And these little spots where I've gone over it once or twice, little flecks of the paper have come off the, the page. And if that starts happening, you just need to leave it to dry for a little bit because it means you're pulling up parts of the paper and you're eventually going to make a hole in your paper if you keep going. So just stop, even if it's not perfectly blended, we are going to paint over this with a few layers and it will hide any imperfections. But now that we've done the wash on the tail, we're going to give it a little bit of time to dry and we're going to paint the head and the crest. Now you can see the head and the crest, it's a nice dark blue. I'm just going to turn my page over because I'm going to be painting at the top of it now. 
So I've got a little bit of water in my palette that I put there earlier. Just going to wet my brush and roll it around in the blue. Mix it in there. As a rule, I usually dip it in twice, so get water and um, get paint to add to the water twice before I check it. I usually find if you just roll your paintbrush around in the paints once, the color's not strong enough. Okay, so we're going to use our scrap piece of paper and just test this color. So this color is a bit too bright. What I'm doing is taking my other blue and mixing it in, and I'm going to add in a little bit of the green. If you like the bright color, you could also leave it at that, but I'm trying to go for the color of a peacock. Oh, that's looking very similar. So that means I'm not adding enough paint to it. So go again, add a little bit more green. Okay, let me test it again. Okay, that color is looking much more like what I want. So sometimes it takes two or three tries of adding colors before you get the color that you would like. It's always important to test it before you put it on your picture. Okay, and this one we're just going to paint over the body. You want a thinner paintbrush line, you should not press as hard. Then in places where you'd like it thicker, you can press a little bit harder and the brush spreads out a bit more. Okay, we're going to go over his crest too. Now we are going to add a second layer of colour on his head, but we're going to let it dry first. So in watercolours, where you paint a layer, let it dry and paint another layer over it, that's called glazing. So what we're doing today is an example of glazing. It's also sometimes called um, wet on dry. So there's dry paint and we're going to put some wet paint on it. So we've given this tail a little bit of time to dry and we are going to add some details on it. Now we're just going to use the same wash that we used earlier for the tail. I'm just going to add a little bit more paint to it to make it slightly darker. So we used some green and some blue in the tail, so I'm rolling my brush around, adding it in. Don't forget to uh, wash your brush before you move to a different color, otherwise you're going to muddy all of your colors. So just make it a habit to wash your brush before you to use it next, use the next color. So I've just dipped my brush in the paints one more time for each of them. I'm going to give it a test and that's a nice shade darker, so we're going to be using that. Right, and what we're going to do is just draw a nice big teardrop shape. It should take up about half of the tail. I'm going to start with the outline of it. Now you can see at the top here, the paint was still a little bit wet, so it's bleeding. And at the bottom it's dry, it's a nice clean line. So that's a lesson in patience with watercolors. If you want a nice clean line like that, you need to make sure that the bottom layer is dry. If you are rushing it, you're going to get a finish like this. That's a bit blurry. Sometimes you want a blurry finish to blend things in. And sometimes you want a nice clean finish. So I just drew the outline of the teardrop with my paintbrush and now I'm dipping my paintbrush in the water and just pulling the colors in and it's kind of um, creating shading. So it's got a dark outline and it's getting lighter as it gets into the center. Then I'm going to take some of the blue that I used in the peacock's head and I'm going to add a few details onto my tail. So I'm just going to repeat this um, teardrop shape. Um, the good thing about this picture is it's really forgiving. So it's a nice picture to start with. Even if you make a little bit of a mess of the tail, there's so much going on in the tail, you can hide most of your mistakes and it will still look really nice at the end. So it's a good picture to boost your confidence. Right, what we're going to do now, now that we've done a few of these little teardrops, is draw some little wavy lines that are going down. 
Now we kind of want them to blend into each other, so don't worry if the colors are bleeding into each other. This is called wet on wet. And I'm drawing some squiggly lines going down. This is to make people think of a peacock's tail. So it's um, got those really thin little feathers that come off the edges of it. What we're going to do now is give the tail some time to dry and we're going to do a second layer on the head and the crest. So what's nice about this picture is that you can work on one little bit for some time, let it dry, work on the other half. So you switch between the two. Right, now again we want to make this colour a little bit darker. I'm going to get some of my blue and add it into the colour that I was using for the peacock's head and crest. So I've dipped my brush in the paint twice and now I'm going to test my wash. I think I'd like it a little darker. You need to make sure that you've gotten all the paint off your brush before you test it. So if you haven't rolled the paintbrush around in the wash enough, when you test it you're just getting the straight colour from here. So you need to make sure that you've mixed it well before you test it. I'm just going to add one more load of paint. Right, I'm happy with my colour now. What we're going to do is go over the head and the body again, but we're going to leave some of the first colour visible. So I'm going just on the inside of the peacock's neck, so we're leaving a little bit of the light colour on the outside of his neck, and there'll also be some shadow on the bottom of his head, and you can even go around the top of the eye a little bit, so we're just leaving a little sliver of colour showing. When you have more than one colour on something, it gives it depth, so if you give something just one coat of paint, it can look a little bit flat. But on the crest, we're just going to do some scribbles. You can imagine scribbling with a, a pencil to make people think of all the little feathers that are on the peacock's crest. Okay, so I'm just doing little dots of color all around the crest. I'm going to leave that to dry and go back to our tail. Now, if your tail is still a little bit wet, you need to be careful now because we want to have cleaner lines. So I'm just checking my page. It's still a little bit wet. I'm going to leave it to dry for a second before I add more paint to it. Right, if you're a little bit impatient like me and you don't want to wait for your tail to dry, you can just take some paper towel and, and dab it very carefully. Just be careful not to rub it. You just want to dab it down. And that can take some of the excess liquid off and help speed up the drying process. Okay, so after a bit of dabbing, I'm ready to carry on painting my next layer. So we've got this, the same washes that we were using earlier. And we're just going to add a few more details. So inside our teardrop, we're going to take our darker blue that we used on the head and the crest. And we're going to draw a smaller teardrop on the inside. If you're not feeling confident, you could... Um, just quickly draw a light pencil teardrop as a guide. Um, but as I said, this is quite a, a loose painting, so you can get away with not having a perfect picture. Now this is quite a dark line. I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in my water and use my water to blend the inside of it. So I want a nice clean line on the outside, but on the inside, I want to blend it in. So you just need to use circular motions to pull the paint in. It's a nice easy way to blend watercolors. Just draw the line and then add water into it. Okay, we're going to just add a few dots on the peacock. So there's a, a couple of dots on the peacock's pattern. This is a very loose interpretation of a peacock. So we're not actually doing peacock patterns, we're just giving the illusion or the impression of a peacock pattern. So I've done five dots on the bottom of the tail. And it, as a general rule, 
Um, if you do odd numbers, so say three, five, or seven, it looks a, a lot better than if you do even numbers, a group of four or five. Right, now I'm just going to go ahead and add some details to the tail. So I'm going to do a couple of, this, of these thin little lines going down to give the impression of those skinny little feathers that are on the peacock's tail. We added a few of them earlier with our previous wash. Okay, then you can do some dots. If your teardrops have um, faded into the background, you could do another outline of a teardrop. Um, just have fun and be creative with this tail. You can also use another layer of the, the tail color and add a few more details in. So I'm just drawing teardrops twirly lines and dots. Because we've left some of it to dry, some of the shading is wet on wet and some of it is dry on wet. I'm just going to go around the outline of my teardrop again. Remember to dip your brush in water if you'd like to blend something. So if you don't want it to look like just an outline, a little bit of water over there will help it. One thing to remember when you're doing watercolors is that often they have a life of their own. Um, so just go with the flow when you're painting watercolors. And let the picture kind of has a life of its own. So don't get too worried if it's not turning out quite the way you had hoped. Remember, if you start to see those little um, lumps of paper coming up you need to to stop don't keep going you're going to make a hole in your page so i'm going to just leave mine to dry for a little bit i'm quite happy with how my tail has turned out but you can keep working at it with your two colors just adding lots of layers and and the twirly lines and little dots and teardrop shapes just repeating that pattern just to finish off your picture you might want to take a darker pencil or even a black pen um, and go over some of these details that we've left in pencil. So I'm going to press a slightly, press slightly harder, make the little um, lines going to the crest clearer, make its eye a little bit clearer, perhaps shade in the beak a little bit. And add a little bit of dark shading underneath the peacock's body. Maybe you want to go over the fish scales again a little bit darker. Sometimes once you've painted it, the pencil lines that you've drawn fade into the background a little bit and you need to make them a bit darker so that they stand out in the picture and they're just as strong as the rest of the picture. Right. And that is how easy watercolours can be. I hope you had lots of fun today learning more about watercolours with me. Please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more.